What's up guys, Velocity here, back with another Unreal Engine 5 material tutorial. And in today's video, we'll be looking at how to create this really cool RGB shifting effect that is actually a material function, which means you can easily drag and drop it into any of your existing materials and instantly gain access to the RGB shifting. Without further ado, let me show you how to make this. All right, to start out, I'll go into my materials folder. If you don't have one of these already, go ahead and right click and make a new folder for that. And then you'll see, I already have a folder in here called hologram. If you haven't seen my last video about how to create this really cool hologram glitch effect, I highly recommend you check that out as we'll be adding the RGB material into this one to see the effect. I'll go back to my materials folder and then right click, make a new folder and call this material functions. Anytime I make a new material function, it'll go inside here. So I'll go into that folder, then I'll right click and then make a new material function from this material drop down here, and I'll call this MF underscore RGB. Once we open up the MF RGB, we can go ahead and start plugging in some nodes. The first thing we wanna do is get a static switch parameter. So I'll search for static switch parameter, and we'll call this RGB question mark because once we put this in our material instance, we'll have this as a switch and by default it will be off. So it won't affect your uh, base materials at all until you check it to be on. Um, but if you wanna use the RGB, you can just go ahead and check it to be true. Now you'll notice right away, it's asking for some inputs. So we can kind of go to the left and work back towards this. So what I'll do is I'll right click, search for time. And then we want to drag off of this and grab a multiply. And then we'll get a scalar parameter by holding S and clicking. And we'll call this RGB speed. And I'll make a default value of 0.1. Not too fast, not too slow. From here, we want to right click and search for hue shift. This is a handy node that lets us shift the hue of whatever the input texture or color is. So what I'll do is I'll plug in the time and multiply here to the hue shift percentage. And this basically will loop, it'll go all the way to one second, and then it'll loop back to zero and then back up to one. And it just continuously goes in a cycle and basically um, shifts the hue um, through the color. And you can kind of visualize that here. So if you hold three and click and get a color, and then if I open this up, basically what the hue shift is doing is it's just moving the hue along the edge over time like this. And we'll be able to do sort of pastel colors if we want, or um, really any kind of color uh, saturation, uh, because we'll promote this to a parameter. So I'll right click, convert to parameter, and I'll call this starting color. And by default, you can set this to be anything as long as it's fully saturated, and then I'll hit okay. Then we can basically um, just drag this over here, because we want to actually, add some more logic to allow us to use our existing color information in our materials. So to do that, we will get an input function or a function input, and then I will highlight this. And on the left, I'll rename it to be color. And let's actually set a preview, um, or we'll set this value here, use preview value as default, that will be true. That way, if we don't have an input, it won't give us an error. And from here, we want to get a multiply node and we'll multiply the starting color by this input color. And then we'll get a lerp node by holding L and clicking. So we will uh, be able to lerp between our starting color and our starting color multiplied by our input incoming color. And we'll do this with a simple parameter called original color influence. I keep capitalizing that O for some reason. Does not want to be lowercase. All right, there we go. By default, we'll have it be zero. So it'll um, just use the regular color if we check on RGB. But if you want to use the original color from your material as the color, then you can just go ahead and um, increase this in the material instance. I'll plug this into texture, and then this goes into RGB. And then if it's false here, we just want to use the original color, basically like nothing happened. So I'll double click that to create a reroute node and kind of clean this up a bit. And then the last thing I want to do is select all of the parameters that we have. So we have those three and the switch. 
and then in the group here i'll um, highlight none and i'll just call this rgb so whenever we use this material function in a master material in the material instance of that they'll all be in a group called rgb so it doesn't get um, confusing and overlap with your existing material parameters all right i'll just highlight this and drag it over to kind of clean it up a bit and now we can go ahead and save and close out and now we have our material function and it's black by default which means that it, the effect is not on which is what we want so to test this we can go back to the materials folder and i'll just make a quick material inside this level of the folder and i'll call it mrgb and then i'll double click to open this up and now i want to go back to my material function that i just made and drag this in here and i'll plug the result into the base color and the emissive color just so we get the full color effect and it's still again off by default which is exactly what we want so now if i save and go back to my material that i just made and make a material instance I'll just leave it that same name. If I open this up and check on the category RGB and turn it on to be true, you can see that now we get the RGB effect over time and it's going to slowly go through all the different colors. And of course you can change the speed and the starting color, or really it's the starting kind of saturation. So if you wanted more muted colors, you could um, sort of lower that saturation and you'll get this more pastel look. Uh, I'll leave it at the full color so we can see it a little bit better. And I'll just save that and go back. And if I drag this onto the floor here, you can see we have a pretty cool effect going on now where it's lighting up the whole scene. And yeah, it's going through all the different colors. Now this is cool and all, but what if we could add it to our character or any existing materials? And that's kind of the beauty of material functions is you can kind of plug and play them anywhere that you want. All right, here we are in my hologram material level. Again, if you haven't seen this tutorial already, make sure to go check it out. I think you'll find it super informative and quick and easy to set up. And you get this really nice hologram glitch effect that you can use on your characters. Now, what we wanna do is go into our master material. So you might be using a different material, um, but for this scenario, I'm using the hologram one. And once I open it up, you can see the material here. And what I wanna do is go back to my material function that I made, the MF RGB, and I'll just click and drag it all the way up to the hologram and drop it right here next to the emissive color output. Then we can put the divide from here into the color and then the result into the emissive color. As long as it's somewhere in the chain after your color information, the function should work just fine. And then I can save and go back to my map. All right, now that we have that material function in the hologram material, we can go back to the folder with all of those instances and I'll just duplicate uh, one that I already have here and I'll name this MI hologram RGB. And then I'll duplicate one of these mannequins and just throw this one on that. So now if I go into the MI hologram RGB material that I made, you can see all the other parameters from the hologram tutorial here that we made. But we're looking for the RGB section now because we added the material function. So now if I turn this category to be on and then check RGB to be true, you can see right away we get the RGB effect on the hologram. And this looks pretty good, but the problem with this now is that it's just using this starting color as all of the color that it's using for the RGB effect. And we wanna get back a little bit of the cool color information from our original material. And whether you're using the hologram material or not, this will still apply. So what we wanna do is to check on original color influence, and I'll set this to be one. And now right away, you can see that it's a little bit more interesting. However, it's still fighting using the starting color. So we're not getting the full color spectrum because it's multiplying all these really saturated colors with another fully saturated color. So we wanna change the starting color in our RGB section to be white, but we wanna keep it as, um, at a full value. And now you can see that it's a little bit more contrasted up here, and it's actually using just only these color inner and outer logic from our hologram effect. Now, if I change, for example, the color outer to be much more uh, drastically different from our color inner, then you can get some really interesting results. For example, if I turn RGB speed up to maybe one, you can see it's kind of going through. Well, that's maybe too fast, but you get the idea. The color on the inner is now different from the color on the outer, 
because it's using our cool color logic that we implemented in the hologram material. Now, what we can do from here to make it a little bit more interesting is you can uh, mess around with, for example, increasing color influence above one. So now if I set it to two, it kind of has this more, even more contrasted effect. Um, and yeah, of course you can crank this up and it gets crazier and crazier. I think you can even go into the negatives, but you might get some glitchy results, which, you know, along with the glitch material kind of looks pretty cool. So you get the idea. There's a lot of things you can mess around with here, but the main overarching idea is that if you turn RGB off, it just uses the original material that you already had set up. And as soon as you turn it on, it should give you some effect. And then you just want to mess around with the starting color. You can either have it on or off with the saturation. And then you can change the speed. For example, if I crank it up really high, you can see it's going crazy. And I'll just set it back to 0.2 maybe. And then original color influence is if you want to use the color from your original material, or you just want it to straight up be the color that you have set in the starting color. All right, everyone, that's gonna do it for today's tutorial on RGB shifting and creating a material function that you can drag and drop easily into your existing materials. If you learned anything at all, it would greatly help us out if you left a like and subscribed. And go ahead and let us know down below in the comments if you have any questions or suggestions about future material tutorials in Unreal Engine 5. And this has been Velocity with Pitchfork Academy, and I'll see you in the next one.